with the uncertainty, especially along the offensive line, obviously it's a position that's been hit, but how do you feel like you guys rallied the second week and where, where do you feel like you may be made the biggest improvement? Um, I think there's still a lot that we need to improve on. Obviously we can play a lot better than we did, but um, I think, you know, by the second half, we really started uh, kind of gelling together. Our communication was there despite it being uh, uh, on the road in a tough atmosphere. And we just, we, we played with a lot more finish and just a lot more competitiveness. And I think um, at the end of the day, you know, we still, we didn't play our best game, but, but we made plays when we needed to, to win the game. And uh, I think it started with having a really good two weeks of practice. And we, we really were challenged by, you know, by everyone on the team, you know, we got to be better than we were against Arkansas State. I think everyone on the up along the offensive line took those two weeks of practice as a great opportunity to get better and work on their craft. And, uh, and we all did that. And um, we still got a long ways to go. We're going to keep doing that. And uh, I'm excited to see where we go. Kels. Hey, Noah, I'm sure uh, getting hurt so early into the Arkansas State game wasn't something you envisioned. How hard was that to go through and, and work back from before the Oklahoma game? Um, I mean, getting hurt always sucks, uh, especially when it was something like my, you know, my elbow being hurt because, you know, I tried to go back in and just couldn't do it. Um, at the same time during that game, it also put uh, ben Adler in a different position that you know he wasn't as prepped for. So I was trying to lock in and you know trying to trying to help him out as best I could. And then Hayden Gillum even got a chance last, or against Arkansas State and he did a great job. And then for me it was just trying to get my elbow right and uh, using that motivation that you know I didn't get you know a full opportunity against Arkansas State. So I wanted to. Um, you know, play well against Oklahoma and be ready to go. And so just using that motivation was a little bit extra, I guess. The uh, offensive line really seemed to click and improve quite a bit in the second half of that Oklahoma game. Where Was there a moment you could tell everything's starting to turn right for you guys? Um, I, I think, you know, probably that first, that first angle route that Deuce took almost to the house, and then we QB sneaked it in. I think it's just making those big plays, kind of chipping away, getting the uh, getting the defense to maybe uh, load the box a little bit less, you know, because they have to respect all the playmakers we got on the outside. Um, and then just for us getting some confidence rolling, because I think that's a big part in our room. It's the more the more confidence you have, the easier it is to play. And as the game – we're on the more confident we got in each other and in our game plan and in, in our playmakers and in Skyler. And uh, we just kept finishing. And that's the most important thing is we finished one play at a time uh, every single play until the fourth quarter. And that's the result you get when you have that type of mentality. Uh, thanks for these answers. I just got one more for you. How big of a lift was Christian Duffy in that game? Uh, Duff played awesome. Duff played, played really good. And, uh, I know how much, how much missing the Arkansas State game killed him because I know how hard he worked this uh, this summer to be in a position to really, really make an impact this year, and uh, couldn't be more proud of him. I couldn't be be more proud of uh, of Josh Revis, Ben Adler, Cooper Beebe, KT. Um, playing next to Josh and Ben really makes my life a lot easier. They they. Uh, Help out a lot, but yeah, Duff. Duff played awesome. That was awesome to see. Let's go next to Fitz. I know a, a good game on Saturday. Nice game, I should say. It. Uh, I was kind of asked my question, but as that game got rolling and you guys got in a rhythm, and then you went back and watched film, could you see how much better you got once you started to break down the film? Um. Yeah, I th obviously we got on a on a bit of a roll in the in the second half, but we also saw in the first half that even in that first quarter, I think our first drive was a three and out, and each three plays of that first drive, um, one of us had you know a bust or something, and if we get that corrected, 
then all three of those buddies had an opportunity to do a lot more than what they did. And that was kind of the theme that we saw watching film from the first, you know, first half, even, even in the second half is that there's still some lack of execution stuff that we have to take upon ourselves and we have to correct. And um, once we get that corrected and we keep playing hard and we keep playing and we keep finishing, I think, um, we're going to be able to kind of take what we did in the second half where we got everything going and, and got um, all, our, all our things corrected. And you saw the result, you know, started scoring points. I think if we can do that from the jump, we're going to be in a lot better spot. We won't have to make 21-point uh, comebacks. So. When, and when you went and watched the film of Deuce's final touchdown, that I think 38-yard run, how beautifully blocked was that play? Um, it was well blocked. Uh, we kind of got lucky and uh, we quick counted them and they were, they were stemming in and out of their fronts. So we got, we got them off guard a little bit and, uh, Josh Rivas had a really, really made an awesome play and climbed up to a safety and got him blocked. And, um, uh, I think you guys can tell if you just give Deuce a little bit of space, he's going to make something happen. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good play. Last one here, Michael. Yeah, no, you mentioned communication. How uh, how far has that progressed to this point in the season? And how far uh, will it take you to have that week two road environment uh, behind you moving forward? Um, communication is so important uh, between between an offensive line and just the offense as a whole. Um, and for the, for the first half of that OU game, uh, I wasn't up to par with my role as what I need to do communicating. I, I let the crowd noise get to me a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing is, is the trust between us to sometimes not have to necessarily verbalize the communication, but to know that, okay, Ben knows what I'm thinking. Josh knows what I'm thinking. Josh and Duff are on the same page and Cooper and Ben are on the same page because sometimes things happen so fast, late in a snap count, you're not going to get everything communicated and everything fixed. And everyone just needs to know this is what we're seeing. These are our rules this is what we need to do. So the more we play together, the more we get into, the more we experience hostile environments, the more we experience different pictures, different looks from defenses, the better it's going to get. And we're going to keep working on it every day in practice. And, um, you know, that's that's pretty much it. We just got to keep improving on it. And what was the difference in playing in front of 20,000 versus 80 or 90,000? Uh, well, I've never played in front of 80 or 90,000. And but before I played in front of 20,000, uh, those are still a lot more people than like a game at Garden City or something like that. So is a is a little bit louder than that. But um, it was cool. I'm uh. For me, it doesn't really matter who, how many people we play in front of, because the people that matter to me are the are the people on our sideline and in our program and and family that gets to come to the games, and they still all get to come. So fans are a nice added bonus, but that's not, you know, something that I play for or am motivated at, by at all. 